Hello everyone! Moving on, let's start by looking into the question. Why is the crowd elite society collapsing? The crowd elite society contains a large-scale phenomenon – social envy – to those who consume more. This phenomenon is well known to everyone. In Russian society, this is also clearly manifested. I want to live as others live. Here, it implies that others live better. This envy results in indiscriminateness of means in the race of borderless consumerism. Man himself decides on how much he consumes. This social envy pushes him to consume more and more. The elite, as well as the crowd, thoughtlessly follow the caprices of fashion and senselessly exhaust natural and human resources, material and spiritual ones. The elite's list of needs always flows over the achieved level. All this was not understood by Thomas Robert Malthus, the author of the so-called theory of best people. Let's talk about his role. Malthus didn't comprehend the role of crowd elite society. His non-understanding generated a theory on the best people, Malthusianism, which in turn generates genocide. We suppose he could have noticed that the primitive community systems, free of the crowd elite model, have steadily existed throughout the centuries, as they live in economical and ecological balance with nature. They have inner harmony and do not experience many diseases. Many ask me a question. How many people should there be in order not to overload the planet? The global predictor believe that the planet can feed 2, maximum 3 billion people. But in fact, only God knows how many people the planet can feed. If we use today's principles of resource usage, then the planet can easily feed around a little over 20 billion people, if they inhabit all living space. In Japan, for instance, there are as many people living as in Russia and the CIS countries combined. So to say, one can correlate numbers. But the question is, what is the limit? Imagine, an island inhabited by a tribe. The island is restricted. It has palm trees and so on. The island is not overpopulated. Throughout many years there has been no overpopulation at all, and the population of this tribe is on a natural level. Why? Because the people live in harmony with nature. I don't mean to say that we should wear loincloths, beat drums, and live like this tribe. What I only mean to say is, we have to create such life arrangements on Earth that will enable us to live in harmony with nature and God's design. And the population will come to a norm, which is predetermined from above and is the best variant. As mankind lives according to the principle, I do what I want to do, we have overpopulation in some corners of the world, overpopulation in relation to the ecological niche, and in some places there are few people. Besides, due to the anti-human conception, there exist people like Malthus, anti-globalists, and so on. And all these processes the global predictor takes over and rules according to their own principles. The race of consumerism is, in its essence, interspecific competition aimed at an annihilation of the weak. The following types of people, therefore, survive in it. The strongest and the most ruthless human-like predators and parasites. Face the fact, who actually survives in today's society? These are human-like predators, people-beasts, subhuman scum, who follow the animal-predator principles. The people who, alone or with others, have risen from the crowd to the level of true humanity, and the patterns inherent for the animalistic world have no impact on such people. 
they find their intraspecific competition ridiculous. It is neither threatening nor interesting for them. Slavery served them, caste systems of the crowd elite society restrained the race of consumerism, restricting the lower stratums of society. Meanwhile, capitalism removed these restrictions, bans. This restricting factor of caste system no longer exists. In the introductory lecture, I already said that only 5% of the population lives in the USA, and these 5% consume 50% of all the resources extracted by the entire mankind. Now, imagine that we are the global predictor. We know that we have created a situation in which the USA is perceived by the rest of the world as a guiding light. Everybody looks at them. If the rest of the countries and nations were to live according to the American standards, then mankind would suck all the resources from the planet within a few years. This scenario is not suitable for the GP, so we, the global predictor, will debunk the cult of the USA created by ourselves. We will turn them into the empire of evil. How? Look, Americans bombed Belgrade. The entire Slavic world still holds a grudge against them. Having entered Baghdad, Americans alienated the Islamic world. So we, the global predictor, will continue this process. When we pull down the dollar and the USA, the entire world will say, it serves you right, bastards. This is global politics, and one should understand it. And the most important thing is to understand cause-effect relationships. Let's go back to the main topic. Unlike the animal world, the crowd elite society is insatiable in nature. This is why the crowd elite society is anti-nature in terms of materialism and satanic in terms of religions, so to say, idealism. This turns the technological and scientific progress into a weapon of suicide. Such a technospheric civilization is insatiable in essence and is an intellectually armed, suicide parasitic in relation to the biosphere. All of this is manifested in the fact that we are destroying nature, forests, polluting the environment, the world's oceans, blindly and thoughtlessly running after money. Such a situation will definitely activate the pan-nature factors, which support the stability of creation and will lead to the following things. In the worst case, a global ecological catastrophe in which the entire biosphere will perish. In the best case, a collapse of culture without destroying the biosphere. There is a story by Jack London called The Scarlet Plague where he describes a catastrophe, after which the survivors degraded down to the zero culture level of a monkey. But some of the parish civilization remained, for instance, rails, libraries, old buildings. However, the people lost their knowledge. There are two boys in the story, living in the post-apocalyptic world. They speak about their grandfather, who can still remember the previous world. They say that their grandfather is a strange man, as he uses strange words. Living in the post-apocalyptic world, the boys perceive everything simply and even primitively. For example, it is very strange for them the idea of different shades of red. When their grandfather tells them about the color, scarlet, they laugh at him and take all he says as nonsense. Local catastrophes of the crowd elite culture have taken place repeatedly. The demise of the civilizations of Babylon, Egypt, Rome, etc. In particular, Alexander Bloch has such lines in his poem. Your ancient forge has hammered down the ages. Messina, Lisbon. These you thought were pages. To put it another way, when these catastrophes came, people did not understand what caused them. 
This time there will be a catastrophe on a global scale, with terrible consequences, as we have arsenals of weapons of mass destruction, chemical, biological, nuclear weapons, as a result of which there will be a collapse of the social unification of labor, the reproduction of professionalism, the primary comfort of consumption and technospheric protection from nature. Nowadays, for instance, we have no more high-qualified metal workers, handymen. Professionalism is being gradually lost. Now imagine what's going on in the space industry. I'm saying this as I'm familiar with the situation in this sphere. All this is fading into nothingness. Religions state that there is yet another possibility, so-called Judgment Day, according to which sinful people go to the left, righteous people to the right. Angels with swords of fire establish order. Then there will be a direct divine governance, God's rule. What conclusion can we draw from all this? Man, do you have reason? If yes, why don't you use it? In other words, the slogan is Crowder, become a human. This is predetermined for you from above. Today's situation of the crowderly society is such that when a crisis and a collapse come, the crowd, the majority of the population, are not able to live in a human way, as they do not have theoretical knowledge and practical skills. They have no free time. All their time is occupied by work and so-called rest in front of the TV with a bottle of something in order to restore themselves for a new workday. The crowd is a hostage of the productive sphere, as the crowd has no theoretical knowledge and practical skills. Why does the crowd have no theoretical knowledge and practical skills? Because the crowd has no free time. Why does the crowd have no free time? Because there are good movies on TV, one wants to go out dancing or to a bar for some drinks with friends. The elite, however, which is the crowd in its essence, does not live in a human way either. As elite families are occupied by pseudo-activity, the race of boundless consumerism, amusements in voluptuousness. That's why the elite crowd is a hostage of consumerism. Pseudo-activity in this case means, for instance, charity. It is when wives of big bosses go to orphanages or hospitals and distribute sweets and such to those whom they have plundered. It is pure humiliation, which, in this quality, is not perceived by ordinary people. You just put yourself in the position of that kid who takes these handouts. Imagine what's going on inside of him at that moment. In this regard, I recall that movie, The Sand Pit Generals, The Defiance. There is also an American version of it, made in 1971. As for the Russian version, there is a scene with the following words. If I had a chance, I would make you pay back for all that you have done to me. Actually, these are the words of the song in that movie. Such kids often turn skinheads or some other class of delinquent, at the hands of whom the elite, later, will be terminated. The best charity is when one does not need to give any charity. We have to make it so that every person can live in society, in dignity, in sufficiency. Of course, there are times when one needs to help, but it shouldn't be that one's life depends on someone else, whether one gets handouts from that person or not. As one can see, on one hand, there is the crowd, a hostage of the production sphere. On the other hand, there is the elite, a hostage of their needs. Thus, the crowd elite society is slavery. Let's look at that picture again. There exist slave masters, overwatchers and slaves. 
From the point of religions, we know that overwatchers are herded on the basis of Judaism, and slaves are herded on the basis of Judeo-Christianity. This makes a twofold ideological complex, the chains of which are difficult to break without understanding what we are talking about. Now, mankind needs a shift from the technosphere civilization, which is self-liquidating, to another type of civilization. In this situation, what is the main point? Speaking of our country, Russia, atheists understand that you make your own entertainment, or the more literate translation of the Russian version. The saving of those drowning depends on themselves. These atheists are engineers, employees of the production sphere, etc., who think, search and find the truth. As for atheists, sooner or later they may come to the understanding that God exists. As for believers in religions and rituals, those who are not inclined to doubt about the religious dogmas, it is much harder with them. They have forgotten the saying, God helps those who help themselves. They wait for the grass to grow. They are slackers and dependents. They do not want to think, but instead lay all responsibility at God or someone else's door. The crowd elite model exists everywhere, including the West, in different spheres of human activity. The sphere of culture, sport, education, security agencies. Look what we have. There exists the global predictor. By the way, when we talk about ancient times, we often use the term the pseudo -jretzis. They are the conceptual power. Then, below them, we have usurious clans, dictatorial governors of the world's economy, that is, oligarchs, who politically establish their indivisible power. Further down the pyramid, we have the creative and intellectual elite, stars of art, cinema, sport, etc., that create a democratic or totalitarian facade for dictation of the usurious mafia. The entire elite of this kind is fed by usurers. The elite is mostly plain, careless, and not responsible for the consequences of the nonsense they put out. They live in luxury and teach moral norms to others. They become idols, and these idols are purposely created. The things that they wear are also worn by their fans, the things that they eat are also eaten by their fans, and so on. Generally speaking, all of these idols are puppets, who are deliberately formed. I'm talking about movie stars, sportsmen, sportswomen, and others. This is also part of the crowd elite system. As a rule, they know nothing in life, and they are being used to hide the real governance and to sustain the crowd elite system. On a lower stratum, we have a scientific technical elite and high qualified specialists from different fields. On the very bottom, we have the crowd, ordinary people working in the production, not necessarily material and the service sectors. The crowd exists as an appendage to their workplaces, jobs. Here is an example from our country. We have a famous singer, Ludmila Zikina, admired by ordinary people, who campaigned for Viktor Chernomyrdin. The question is, what does she know about governance? You know, in this regard, Aristotle once said, only shoemakers can choose the best shoemaker, only smiths can choose the best smith. But what advice can those who know nothing about governance give? People, however, trust her, as they believe in her authoritative image. Another example. Oleg Gazmanov campaigned for Yevgeny Shapushnikov, the Minister of Defense, 
whose governance brought the army to a total collapse. What does the singer Gazmanov know about governance? As you see, these thoughtless stars of sport, cinema, music, etc., set the tone of the political views. Through these, softly speaking, stupid celebrities, people are fooled around. The scientific, technical elite, what is imposed on them? Everyone should deal with his own business. These people totally refuse to involve themselves in politics, make it part of their lives. They therefore brush aside it. Some of the people I know state, my job is to invent rockets, and that's it. So I ask them, as well as all the scientific, technical, intellectuals, where are all these inventions? Where are all these rockets? Where are they? Why do we fail to implement these projects? I was the deputy head of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Do you know what happened to our famous Buran? They turned it into a pub. And now we are coming to the function of the scientific technical elite in the crowd elite society. This elite serves as a layer between the elite above them and the crowd below them in order to prevent the crowd from understanding the financial sector and other such things. However, speaking of our country, we have made a breakthrough. In particular, the COB, the Russian abbreviation of the conception of social safety, was worked out by officers in the Russian Navy and other military forces who work in the fields of high technology. Having applied this knowledge to all fields, including the fields of the humanities, broke through this layer and came to an understanding of how all this works. Speaking of mankind, I want to give you the following image. Nowadays, we can compare mankind to a submarine. First, there were national dresses. Then they were terminated. As a result, headless countries appeared with the GP on top. Throughout history, the compartments of the submarine, whether you like it or not, have been joined together through the pipelines of gas, oil, cables of communication, also through tourism, trade, internet, and so on. The ruling of the submarine is carried out by the GP. Now, hold this image of the submarine in your mind. And Russia is just a compartment, a huge compartment, frankly speaking, but just a compartment of this submarine, named Mankind of Planet Earth. This image will serve us well as we consider the following question. One should also understand that the crowd elite society is not determined by genetics. The crowd elite society is man-made. The law of time, the new informational state that we live in, is breaking the crowd elite system. As I have said before, the sustainability of relations in the crowd elite society is based on the sustainability of the pyramid of knowledge. If the pyramid of knowledge collapses, the knowledge will run down into the lower stratums of society. So the pyramid will collapse too. The new informational state that we live in now is in the process of breaking this pyramid. The new informational state has a name, the law of time. What is the essence of this? Imagine, a person is born somewhere in Tumen, Russia, in the 19th century. He looks through the window of his wooden house and sees a horse cart passing and creaking. He lives his life. His time comes. On his deathbed, he looks through the window for the final time and sees the same horse cart passing and creaking. In other words, nothing has changed throughout his life. Even if there have been some small changes, they are not that important. They do not make much of an impact, so you do not take them into consideration. Now, we live at a time 
when during the life of a person or within one generation. Repeated changes in the informational state are manifold. You can find examples in any sphere. I was trained to be an applied mathematician. I studied the abacus, the arithmometer. When I was a cadet, I was studying vacuum tube computers. They were so messy that even this room wouldn't be enough to hold these machines. After that, I was taught transistors. Then I studied chips, microchips, programming languages, binary, then autocode engineering. Afterwards, I learned Algol, Fortran, and then the Polish Fortran. Now, let's go back to these two pyramids and imagine that we live in the 17th century, in the old informational state. We definitely want to live well. In order to live well, our slaves must work well. We therefore have to teach them how to do some things. And so, we teach one slave to saw, another slave to whittle, a third slave to hammer nails, and our slaves only do what we want them to do. So our slaves do what we taught them to do. We sell those commodities that they produce and live a good life. In that informational state, giving a certain amount of knowledge to slaves was enough for masters to live well. Nowadays, the situation is different. We train a slave to operate a lathe machine. However, in two years, a new lathe machine is invented. And so the slave has to have more training in order to learn how to operate a new lathe machine. In five years' time, he has to do another course to learn how to use a lathe machine based on a new programming language. In other words, slaves, periodically, have to get new knowledge within the new informational state. As a consequence, people like worms reach the top of the pyramid of knowledge and possess that knowledge, the access to which belonged only to the pseudo before. We see that the pyramid of knowledge is melting like a cone of ice cream. As it is melting, the pyramid of the crowdly society is melting too. So slave masters, periodically, have to give their slaves new knowledge within the new informational state. But if they give their slaves new knowledge, they will not be slaves anymore. So, the slave masters shouldn't give their slaves new knowledge. But if they do not give their slaves new knowledge, they won't work well and the slave masters, therefore, will not live well. So, they have to give them new knowledge. But if they give them new knowledge, their slaves won't be slaves anymore. Then, in this case, slave masters will not live well. So, you see, it is like an enclosed circuit. Both of the pyramids are objectively collapsing. Look at this picture. Here we see a frequency of informational change on the genetic level. One generation, another generation. On average, there is a generational change every 25 years. One generation grows up, they raise children who, in 25 years, on average, will have their own children, and so on. This is what we name a frequency of generational change. Throughout the global historical process, the frequency of generational change was, on average, around 25 years. Why? Because, on average, women in the past mostly gave birth at the age of 20-25. Of course, there have always been exceptions. I know cases where 12-14-year-old girls have babies. I've heard of a case where a 61-year-old woman in Corsica gave birth to her first child. However, in general, according to the law of normal distribution, this period is around 20-25 years. This also coincides with another parameter. It takes a person around 20 years to get his education. At around 25, he is active, 
and gets a job. Then he slowly fades away. However, as for the change of technologies, it has always been of a periodical nature. Speaking of means of communication, we first had doves, post carriages, then postal airlines, after that telephones, computers, and so on. Look what happened. If you look at any sphere, transport, communication, computing, and so on. In the past, the updating of technology was a slow process. For instance, in medieval times, a doctor acquired some professional skills, and these skills were enough to last him till the end of his life. Nowadays, doctors constantly encounter updates, changes, new procedures, and so on. In other words, a doctor always has to update his knowledge. Beforehand, the frequency of generational change was higher than the frequency of technological change. But in 1945-1946 these frequencies coincided. In our country this happened during the time that Stalin was in power. The Bible refers to this time in Revelations as the Apocalypse. It said something along the lines of when the time comes, there will be no time. How does man determine time? He correlates one frequency with another. If a person's oscillations are lower than high-frequency processes, then he sees time. But if his frequencies coincide with frequencies of processes, then time does not exist for man. To put it another way, mankind has already lived through the apocalypse. Now we live at the time when the frequency of technological change and social frequencies are higher than the biological frequencies. We live at a time when during the life of a person or within one generation there are so many changes that happen one after another. And this is a pressing factor on mankind. If a person as an individual as well as mankind as whole do not adapt to this, they will perish. Today we observe a large number of suicides, cases of hopelessness, alcohol abuse, the search for life's mission in Eastern religions, spiritual practices, numerous other practices involving all possible kinds of narcotics and psychedelics, and so on. All these are miserable attempts to adapt to this present factor, speaking to the fact that there has never been anything like this throughout history. That's why people do not know what to do. They cannot live the way they lived before, but they also don't know how to live in a new way. For this reason, people jump from one teaching to another in order somehow to loosen the pressure on their psyches. But they are looking for answers in the wrong place. Let's go back to Tuchev's words. God did not let us second guess how our word would come back slanted, yet empathy to us is granted, the same way with His grace we are blessed. But this was written at a time when if one said or did something, it was not easy to notice the effects of this, or observe how these words or actions reflect and come back to you. Now, due to the law of time, it comes back very quickly. Look at the example of Gorbachev when he was punched in the face by a Russian man at the airport of Siberia. It came back to Gorbachev. It will come back, boomerang, on all our alleged Russian homies that are used to easy, illegal money and being parasitic on Russian peoples, not believing that this parasitism will boomerang back on them, as they do not understand this new informational state. And in this new informational state, it is useless to govern the way it was done before. Beforehand, it was possible to easily and quickly govern in an order administrative manner. But now, before one gets an order from the Kremlin, the situation can change a hundred times. 
This means that this other administrative type of governance has become obsolete. For this reason, there should be a shift to a self-governance mode. It is when people themselves are responsible for making decisions. But in order to do that, they have to correctly understand what's going on. So, they should have relevant knowledge. As far as one can see, the love time is a serious thing. It is no joke. For the reason I mentioned above, laws in Russia do not function. In the State Duma they invent a law, but in a year the situation changes, and the law is not useful anymore. Then they invent another law. Soon after that the situation changes again. From this point of view, why do we have a crisis in the submarine of humanity? Let's look at the examples of the compartments of India and Pakistan. In these countries, people, like worms breaking through the soil, reach the top of the pyramid of knowledge and mastered knowledge on nuclear weapons. They created nuclear bonds and declared that they would fight with each other until their victorious end. India, Hinduism, Pakistan, Islam. By the way, this ideological mind was planted by the global predictor, implementing their principle, divide and conquer, when splitting India into parts. The global mafia, the global predictor, who ruled the submarine, they sent in Tony Blair, who tried to tell them that they, Pakistan and India, were about to sink the submarine. However, they insisted, we will fight until we are victorious. Blair failed his mission. Who stabilized that situation? I already told you that it was Putin. This serves as a prime example of global politics. The law of time concerns every viewer, every person. How? Speaking of our country, Let's talk about the 12-year education system in Russia. History teachers say, students study ancient times, medieval times, the USSR. We also need time to study the period of Yeltsin's governance. Teachers in other disciplines say the same. But this is stupid nonsense. The same thing concerns universities. For instance, a person graduates after five years of studying. He, let's say, has completed a course on chips, which, come graduation day, already a thing of the past. And now microchips or biochips are in use. So, it turns out that those years of studying at university were a useless waste of time. To put it another way, the new informational state, the law of time, poses in the educational system the task of transition from factual to methodological education, from teaching facts to teaching the methodology. There exist many facts. It is impossible to know them all. So, a person should have a method that enables him to acquire knowledge by himself as the need arises. But this requires a change of the attitude to education. Now, the situation is like this. Many young people feel released, a weight of their shoulders, when they finally graduate. But in the new informational state, man has to study all the time, which requires a completely different attitude to life and education. In the new informational state, he should master the methodology. But is society ready for this? Is there anyone who teaches the methodology? Now is the right time for this. But we have degradation taking place. The methodology, however, has always been the prerogative of the global predictor, but not the crowd. Now we live at a time when everyone has to master the methodology, which the COG, the conception of social safety, talks about in detail. What is methodology? This is the correct understanding of the surrounding world on the basis of the trinity of MIM, 
and the correct understanding of how all processes are governed from the processes of our universe to the processes of our social systems. For this reason, this methodology should be given to all people, including all students. The spread of the conception of social safety is actually happening. Our activists are already sharing this knowledge in scholastic institutions. We are not waiting for any minister's orders. The people themselves shoulder responsibility and give students the knowledge. And in these students, a lively, natural interest for learning is kindled. Here you see the picture I showed Kerzhakov in the security service. I told you about him before. Here is the pyramid of society and knowledge. In the Kremlin, they thought that it was them on top of this pyramid, but not the global predictor. In this picture, you see the crowd and the so-called Russian elite. As I have said, the pyramids are collapsing. This doesn't mean that the collapse will be immediate, as it requires a certain period of time. However, this process is ongoing. Knowledge is flowing down into lower stratums of society. As a result, the crowd is becoming people. The elite, who do not understand anything, what are they doing? The elite is only interested in plundering and continuing to live the life to which they have become accustomed. For instance, Yeltsin said to the regions, take as much sovereignty as you want. As a result of that, the regional elites began to melt and drain their regional crowds. Consequently, the unstable Kremlin began to shake. Addressing the regional elites, it was said at that time, you have to share, as there is a lack of taxes coming from the regions. The thing is, the regional elites enclose all the revenues within their regions. By the way, we still have this kind of correlation between the regional and federal policies. As for the crowd, they have families and kids to support, and they therefore have to move on. Life makes them move on. So it is as if the elite is standing still, while the crowd is moving forward. As a result of this, the elite will definitely collapse, as they need to move with the people. We all should comprehend the new informational state and build our life according to it. Generally speaking, the biblical civilization in the global historical process has come to an end. Before, there existed other civilizations, which perished. Then we went through the life arrangement of tribes, slavery, feudalism, imperialism, and now we live under the domination of the global usual system of banks. And also, when the crowdless system has come to an end, we have to move to the new, anti-crowd elite conception. In our series of lectures, we also talk about what the new conception should be like concerning psychology, sociology, economy, the theory of governance, educational standards, science, technology, and so on. In spite of the abominable situation we are all in now, we live in an amazing time. Mankind has never been in such an informational state that embodies new perspectives, new principles of relation building. And Russia is ahead of others in this sense. We, Russians, unlike anybody else, have already lived through both idealistic and materialistic atheism. Therefore, we stand at the fore of a new possibility of mastery of principally new knowledge. And this new principal knowledge, the COB, the Russian abbreviation, the conception of social safety, which came into existence not from nowhere, but due to the fact that history is irreversible. This means, whatever they do, churches will never be crowded again. The society will never go back to Marxism and so on. 
the psychodynamics of the society will never support these processes. The Russian people, like no other people in the world, are ready to accept and master this knowledge. You know, I travel all over the country, giving lectures, and see that people usually understand this quickly. They do not understand all subtleties and details, but still they grasp the essence. There are people who know all this without my lectures, maybe not in this structured way, the way I tell you, but they do know this. Proceeding from this, I have to say something about political parties. What are they for? Political parties are adherents of the crowd elite system. The thing is, some parties support the crowd elite system through an international movement, and some through a national movement. There are two polarities. Inter-Nazis are Masonic lodges, others, clubs, Zionist parties and movements. But nationalists are neo-monarchists, Judeo-Christian parties and cathedrals, Slavic unions and cathedrals, Cossack organizations, Muslim parties and unions. What do all of them struggle for? What idea do they bring to people? They bring to people the following idea. Everyone in the Kremlin is bad. Our party is good. If we are on top of that pyramid, we will all live well in our country. All parties are parties of the crowd elite system. They follow the standpoints where they are the ones who determine what is right and what is wrong in order to sustain the crowd elite system. And they do not understand that they are inscribed into the global biblical crowd elite conception. But their time will come. What's more, in Russia there exists a so-called political sewage system, into which so many political parties have already been flushed by history. Why? Because they were used and flushed afterwards, so to say, used and abused. It happened strictly according to the law of time. God did not let us second guess how our word would come back slanted. So their words come back boomerang on them, as one cannot talk about things in the new informational state that one does not understand at all. All these parties just fool people around, nothing more. They are all instruments of the global predictor for Cold War. I want you to pay attention to the fact that all these parties stand for the crowd elite model. When they state that the present power is bad, and when they come to power, everything will be great. But what do you substantiate your statement with? They have nothing to substantiate it. These are just empty words. Besides, they do not understand that the crowd elite model, according to the law of time, is doomed to collapse. In essence, these parties are varieties of the crowd elite model. Meanwhile, their forms are different. Internationalists, international crowd elite system. Nationalists, who think that they are patriots, national crowd elite system. Even patriots, however strange and paradoxical it may seem, also stand for the crowd elite system. What is the way out of all these? In order to become true humans, humans with a capital H, both of the crowds, the elite and ordinary people, should become humans, who, of their own volition, care about everyone and everything. They should also be responsible for intentions and results of their activity and inactivity. The stability of governance can be ensured if knowledge and skills in cognition of the world come first, if factology of particular sciences in their chronological order comes second, if real access to all knowledge is guaranteed to all stratums of society and all families. 
We therefore state that knowledge must be given to all stratums of society, the crowd and the elite. Murtovada, dead water, is not something abominable. Good people can fill in a lot of gaps in their minds. As for the rest, you know, we say, if a person is an idiot, it is for a long time, or even forever. As they say, only the grave can straighten the hunchback, or he who is born a fool is never cured. The conception of social safety is an informational cure that can straighten hunchbacks and cure fools. The elite are green with envy, as ordinary people have created the conception of social safety. They cannot condone the fact that ordinary people, but not the scientific elite, like different professors, doctors of science and others, have written the conception. They are indignant. I'm a professor unlike the ordinary folk. So what? What's the point of you being a professor? What is the value of your science? These are my questions addressed to the scientific elite. Why do we, ordinary people, need all these doctors of science, professors, etc.? Let's take the economy, for example. Why do we need all of them if all our economics cannot put our economy in proper order and achieve stable development? How about that question? I think it is a just question, isn't it? How many professors and doctors of economics have we had in the government, in the Kremlin? Where is the economic prosperity? I already told you about Yavlinsky's 500-day program. What did it lead to? Why did all those professors and doctors of economics not lead the country to prosperity? This is what all this economics represents in essence. It is pure nonsense. Further on, we will delve deeper into economics. I myself talked to Gennady Zuganov, the leader of the Communist Party. He's known about the COB, the conception of social safety, since 1993. I was debating with him. He agreed that the conception had to be implemented. He said to me, Yes, 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 Konstantin Pavlovich, you are right. The conception of social safety has a lot of useful things. So what? Yes, yes, yes. If you agree, why is it that you do not implement the conception into your daily political activity? What has Zyuganov done since then to implement it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Why? Because he's also an adherent of the crowd elite system. As all problems in crowd elite society come from permissiveness in the conditions of a monopoly on knowledge and defectiveness of knowledge, then society can get out of this by eliminating the causes. There are two possibilities stemming from this. Either mankind masters their genetically determined potential by consciously putting an end to self-deceit, stopping permissiveness, and harmoniously becoming part of creation, or the capacity for self-delusion by way of self-deception will inevitably bring subhumans to extinction. There exists one more possibility to stop the rampant race of consumerism. This is what the GP is doing now. I'm talking about bio-robotization of masses, so to say, it is an invasion into people's psyche, bypassing their consciousness. But if there are no people, if the entire population is a biorobotic herd, then who is the master of this herd? The agreement on biorobotization is the last self-deception of mankind. A biorobot is not a human, but an anti-natural phenomenon. Biorobots are not subject to ethical standards. What conclusion can we make? Mankind is strayed from the private path. Having been deprived of willpower, 
mankind has become a hostage of technosphere and their own permissiveness. Therefore, the hostage must become the master of his life, and technosphere must find a safe place in a new type of culture, or must be disposed of. All this means that the time has come for the transition of man to a new conception of development, to establish a new private order on planet Earth according to the law of time. Crowd elite society has existed for a long time. We must admit the power of this conception. But according to the law of time, the new informational state, this conception is collapsing. Crowd elite society is collapsing. And the attempts to prevent this collapse are useless. Two possible options stem from this. Either the total extinction of mankind, so to say the sinking of the submarine, or a shift of governance over the submarine to the new conception, the new rules, which correspond to God's designs towards mankind. And how exactly we must reach this goal, we will talk about this in our next videos, which are based on the sufficiently general theory of governance. Thank you. See you next time.